some 200,000 years ago, in what is known as the Northern Levant, a small group of technologically sophisticated humans brought home and dismembered a wealth of species. They killed and butchered a variety of game, including gazelles, deer, and aurochs, the ancestors of modern cattle, using precisely pointed flint spearheads and microblades. These early Homo sapiens hunted for acorns in the adjacent forests of oak, olive, and pistachio in the cool, humid climate of the coastal plain. They ate the salty leaves of the thorny saltbush and carried the yolks of the ostrich eggs back to the cave. These people most likely left Africa more than 200,000 years ago and traveled via lush areas to the Arabian Peninsula. We don't know how many of them crossed, how many died, and how many turned around. All we know is that they showed up in the Levant. We also know that they most likely weren't on their own. We know that the area was occupied by Neanderthal-like creatures, or the ancestors of Neanderthals, at that time based on minor findings of teeth and bones from nearby caves. Homo sapiens may have mated with these Neanderthal-like dwellers. That is to say that they probably knew each other in that biblical sense in this land that eventually gave birth to the Bible. The humans that inhabited the Mislia cave were a part of a population that, according to many academics, eventually went extinct. Later waves of Homo sapiens that migrated out from the continent of Africa were successful in procreating and dispersing. It is most likely in this area that Homo sapiens and Neanderthals first interacted. Tools linked with Neanderthals, such as spearheads and knives, have been discovered in other caves in the region, much as the Mislia cave helps in determining how long anatomically modern people were present in the area. But there are still a lot of unanswered questions. Despite having vocal structure comparable to Homo sapiens, the soft tissue surrounding the vocal box, the region of the throat holding the vocal cords, has not been preserved, thus we are unable to determine whether they were capable of speaking. Neanderthals and Homo sapiens both had a pangshan for primping. Animal teeth, shells and ivory were used to make jewelry by the Neanderthals. They likely used ochre, as well as feathers to adorn themselves. The clever Neanderthals were also expert toolmakers. One eminent anthropologist observed that the world was almost empty of humans at this time, and some researchers believe that Neanderthals were driven from the warm Levant into an ice-covered Europe by violent conflict, with Homo sapiens. In fact, the way I view this, and probably most people would not agree with me, is that the European Neanderthals had no other choice but to live in the frozen north. These tall, long-limbed people lived in the caverns of Kafsa east of Nazareth, and school, on Mount Carmel some 100,000 years ago. They appear to have been a fairly advanced race, confounding the accepted theory that Homo sapiens left Africa. Ultimately, the school and Kafsa people finally perished. School 5 was recovered from the school cave near Mount Carmel, along with the skeletons of nine other adults and children. Some anatomical features like the brow ridges above the eyes of the male school 5 skull are reminiscent of earlier humans. But school 5 also has the high, vertical forehead and rounded skull typical of modern human skulls. At the back of the skull, school 5 also lacks a projecting bun, which occurs in many Neanderthal skulls. The school site was originally thought to be about 40,000 years old based on a comparison of animal remains and stone tools found at the site with those from other archaeological sites in the region. This late date was important since it was then assumed that the Neanderthal fossils found at the nearby fossil site of Tabun Cave must be older than the modern Homo sapiens population of school. This assumption left open the possibility that the Tabun Neanderthals were the evolutionary ancestors of modern humans at school. However, after more precise dating techniques, scientists found that the modern Homo sapiens fossils at school were about 90,000 years old much older than was previously thought. This meant the anatomically modern human population at school lived at the same time as the Neanderthal population of Tabun. Therefore, the Tabun Neanderthals could not have been the ancestors of modern humans in the Near East. The school Kafsa inhabitants collected shells from a shoreline more than 20 kilometers distant, decorated them, and hung them on chains as ornaments. They took care of the living as well as the dead burying the deceased most likely with grave goods. For example, a child born with hydrocephalus, 
often known as water on the brain, survived until the age of three with a severe impairment thanks to careful, loving care. Since their items were so advanced, most archaeologists initially thought the humans had descended from Neanderthals, whose bones had been discovered in nearby caves, for years after their discovery. The Skulkafzeh people were thought to be the missing link between Neanderthals and us for many years, according to study. The remains exhibit a mix of traits found in archaic and anatomically modern humans. They have been tentatively dated at about 80,000 to 120,000 years old, using electron paramagnetic resonance and thermoluminescence dating techniques. The brain case is similar to modern humans, but they possess brow ridges and a projecting facial profile like Neanderthals. They were initially regarded as transitional from Neanderthals to anatomically modern humans or as hybrids between Neanderthals and modern humans. Neanderthal remains have been found nearby at Kebera Cave that date to 61,000 to 48,000 years ago, but it has been hypothesized that the Skulkafzeh hominids had died out by 80,000 years ago because of drying and cooling conditions, favoring a return of a Neanderthal population suggesting that the two types of hominids never made contact in the region. A more recent hypothesis is that Skulkafzeh hominids represent the first exodus of modern humans from Africa around 125,000 years ago, probably via the Sinai Peninsula, and that the robust features exhibited by the Skulkafzeh hominids represent archaic sapiens features rather than Neanderthal features, but starting in the late 1980s, more accurate dating methods disproved that idea. The school people were considerably older, with an average age of nearly 115,000 years, and the Kafzeh humans were roughly 92,000 years old. The school age Kafzeh has cast doubt on the commonly held belief that Homo sapiens did not leave Africa until roughly 60,000 years ago. Even more astonishing was that the majority of the Neanderthal remains were much younger. There was no enigmatic missing link between Neanderthals and modern humans, it was the school Kafzeh people. They were early modern humans, and Neanderthals had replaced them. Indeed, since Darwin's time there has been discussion on how Neanderthals and modern humans are related. Neanderthals sometimes appear to be our defining other, resembling humans but not quite. Neanderthals, who are at least 200,000 years older than us, have frequently been viewed negatively by us. Did we murder, mate with, evolve from, or outcompete them? Whatever occurred, we prevailed. But according to archaeologists our victory was not guaranteed. An impartial observer would have had no foundation for anticipating either the demise of rival human species, or Homo sapiens' current global ecological dominance until about 100,000 years ago. The remains of ten people were discovered at the site, including the school five mandible and cranium, which are largely intact. Neanderthals used basic tools and primitive clothes to endure difficult environments with sub-freezing temperatures for hundreds of thousands of years, as well as predators like scimitar cats and cave lions. They belong to a successful and enduring lineage. Shea and other scholars observe that there isn't much proof of a direct physical conflict, or even that both species were present at the same time in Skulkafzeh, suggesting that Neanderthals may have outcompeted humans there, albeit indirectly. Another widely accepted theory is also flawed. The site should have both species remains that were deposited at the same time, if the Skulkafzeh people and Neanderthals interbred, but they don't. Instead, climate change is the preponderant theory for Neanderthal success in Skulkafzeh. Nearly 75,000 years ago, at a time when the Homo sapiens of Skul and Kafzeh vanished from the fossil record, the Levant's environment changed in favor of Neanderthals. As a result of rapid glaciation, the area became colder and drier, and forests receded and steppe deserts expanded. Neanderthal skeletons were adapted to live in colder climates. Their systems were simplified to take calories from food and convert them into body heat, and their stocky, barrel-chested shape lost less heat and offered lots of insulating muscle. The slim Skulkafzeh people were better at dissipating heat than producing it. Or, Neanderthals just like cold and dry weather. Warm and humid environments were preferred by our ancestors. When it grew cold, people migrated. 
the school Kafzer people therefore appeared to reflect an unusual instance of failure in Homo sapiens historical record rather than the missing link. Before a second, more successful wave of African Homo sapiens arrived in the area around 60,000 years ago, they left Africa, traveled to the Levant, and either withdrew or became extinct. In fact, anthropologists discovered a 55,000-year-old human skull discovered in Manat Cave, close to the school and Kafzer sites, recently in the journal Nature. But the scientists do not think the skull casts doubt on the idea that the school Kafzer people vanished or moved away, despite the skull's close proximity to the earlier sites. Instead, they view each and every fossil in these caves as the scattered remains of a series of little communities. Whether they were larger tribes or smaller hunter-gathering bands, each group eventually found the caverns and prospered there before going extinct. Each cave was occupied for thousands of years by numerous cultures that never actually interacted with one another. The isolation between each tribe and the likely high levels of inbreeding. Archaeologists view the discovery as belonging to an altogether distinct lineage that is at least 40,000 years older than the school and Kafzer populations. Researchers have not been able to extract usable genetic material from the remains, despite the fact that studying their DNA may be able to answer many of the mysteries surrounding these prehistoric people. According to some researchers, the school Kafzer people were not small isolated groups, but rather a part of a larger early migration from Africa into Eurasia. Scientists want to understand how the ancient lakes of the Levant that now make up these desert landscapes contributed to human colonization. Many tools have been discovered thus far, but no fossilized human remains. According to archaeologists, some of the dates of those sites correlate with the advent of Homo sapiens in the Levant around 100,000 years ago. We know that some type of human undoubtedly invaded Arabia. The school Kafzeh represent the westernmost edge of a wider wave of migration that probably proceeded into Eurasia, according to this theory. Did their mobile counterparts perish as well? In fact, the extinction of hunting and gathering populations was probably far more frequent than we recognize today. Clearly, populations entered the Sahara, Arabia, and the Thar Desert of India, but we don't know what became of them. Strong evidence that humans and Neanderthals interbred more than 100,000 years ago, which is tens of thousands of years earlier than we previously believed, was found by a team studying various Neanderthal genomes. Siberian individual exhibited the genetic admixture, but not the European Neanderthals that were also subjected to the study's analysis. According to researchers it suggests that the interbreeding event may have occurred in the Middle East, and that lineage then traveled east without further interaction with Europe. The study adds to the theory that Neanderthals were successful in spreading across Europe and Asia at a time when humans appear to have faltered, gone extinct, or retreated back to Africa even though school and Kafsa have yet to yield any indication of such early contact between the two species. It begs the question of which species was best, at least temporarily. Furthermore, an international research team has discovered the earliest modern human fossil ever found outside of Africa at Mislia Cave. The finding suggests that modern humans left the continent at least 50,000 years earlier than previously thought. Indeed, Mislia Cave is an exciting discovery, because it provides the clearest evidence yet that our ancestors first migrated out of Africa much earlier than we previously believed. It also means that modern humans were potentially meeting and interacting during a longer period of time with other archaic human groups, providing more opportunity for cultural and biological exchanges. The fossil, an upper jawbone with several teeth, was found at a site called Mislia Cave, one of several prehistoric cave sites located on Mount Carmel. Several dating techniques apply to archaeological materials, and the fossil itself suggests the jawbone is between 175,000 to 200,000 years old, pushing back the modern human migration out of Africa by at least 50,000 years. Researchers analyzed the fossil remains relying on micro-CT scans and 3D virtual models, and compared it with other hominin fossils from Africa, Europe and Asia. While all of the anatomical details in the Mislia fossil are fully consistent with modern humans, some features are also found in Neanderthals and other human groups. 
One of the challenges in this study was identifying features in mislia that are found only in modern humans. These are the features that provide the clearest signal of what species the mislia fossil represents. The archaeological evidence reveals that the inhabitants of Mislia Cave were capable hunters of large game species, controlled the production of fire and were associated with an early Middle Paleolithic stone toolkit, similar to that found with the earliest modern humans in Africa. While older fossils of modern humans have been found in Africa, the timing and roots of modern human migration out of Africa are key issues for understanding the evolution of our own species, said the researchers. The region of the Middle East represents a major corridor for hominin migrations during the Pleistocene, and has been occupied at different times by both modern humans and Neanderthals. This new discovery opens the door to demographic replacement, or genetic admixture with local populations earlier than previously thought. Indeed, the evidence from Mislia Cave is consistent with recent suggestions based on ancient DNA for an earlier migration, prior to 220,000 years ago of modern humans out of Africa. What's more, several recent archaeological and fossil discoveries in Asia are also pushing back the first appearance of modern humans in the region, and, by implication, the migration out of Africa, 